Let music charm me last on earth and greet me first in heaven. Those two lines from the song, O Sing to Me of Heaven, perfectly capture the mission and purpose of Eventide. I want to tell you a couple of personal stories today about the birth and spread of hospice choirs singing across the country. Uh, it's about a gathering of people, compassionate people, who provide a bed of music for people to rest on in harmony as they transition from this time to what may come next. How we encounter death is a personal business that no one else can be privy to. My first experience was in a hospital with my grandfather in an oxygen tent. He put his hand out under the uh, oxygen tent. He put it in my mother's hand. And he asked her to read uh, Tennyson's poem, Crossing the Bar. I was scared. I did not know what was happening. Uh, the nurse seemed so disconnected. Little did I know that 55 years later, I would be singing, crossing the bar. I'm a singer in a hospice choir called Eventide. Eventide is a special hospice choir. It's special to the people we sing for, but we're not unique. We are part of a growing movement of hospice choirs all across America. Here's the first personal story. Kate Munger had a deeply profound experience that led her to form Threshold Choirs in the year 2000. Her inspiration came 10 years earlier when her friend Larry was in a coma, dying of HIV AIDS. Kate spent the entire day caring for him, frantically doing household chores in the morning. She then sat by Larry's bedside all afternoon and followed her instinct to sing for him. Larry was in a restless coma and began to calm down as Kate sang. After about an hour, I became positively serene, she said. Kate sang for Larry for about two hours, the same song over and over and over. At the end of that afternoon, she was sure that there would be other singers who might want to give and receive this same kind of gift, what she calls the gift of the deepest and most essential part of ourselves. Today, Kate Munger travels the country facilitating Threshold Choir training workshops with the result that there are now a hundred Threshold Choirs all over the world, most of them here in the United States. The next personal story is by Kathy Leo, the founder and spiritual director of Hallowell, as told in the documentary by Camilla Rockwell called holding our own, embracing the end of life. And Hallowell was born, actually, when Dinah Brunig died. And one of the things that Dinah's illness and, and death enabled us to do is to model a different way of dealing with illness and death. And that is the modeling that we did, is just being open about talking about things that people sometimes are uncomfortable talking about. Little did I know when I suggested to Peter that we might get a few people to sing that he would send out an email and that every possible person that knew how to sing in the Brattleboro area showed up in their tiny little house. She hadn't spoken, and but she did seem to come to life and she responded so strongly to the singing. She was actually singing with us and she kept asking for more songs. Some of them just asking specifically, oh, I want to sing The Waters of Babylon. Or, By the waters of Babylon where we... It was... Uh... A beautiful experience. Several people told me that they'd never been in a situation like that where someone was actively dying. And it was, they just were incredibly moved by the, by the experience. The Hallowell singers have been singing this way ever since in groups from four to 35 singers, quiet, reverent songs over a person in their last hours, or songs of joy and spirit for someone who may be in hospice care but still fully alive in their dying weeks. 
There are now 15 choirs in Vermont based on the Hallowell model of four-part harmony. The threshold choir model is based uh, primarily on one, two, sometimes three-part harmony, and sung by two or three singers, usually women, at a bedside. Hallowell-inspired choirs have moved way beyond Vermont and New England. Kathy and her colleagues have taught Hallowell workshops all across the country, including Massachusetts, which brings me to my personal story. I um, had the great good fortune of meeting and befriending Kathy Leo in, um, at some music camps and week-long workshops uh, in 2003, the year that Hallowell was founded. In the same camps, I also met a woman named Carolyn Jones, who became a very, very dear friend. Carolyn had started her own hospice choir in Montpelier, Vermont. She called it Carolyn's Angel Band. Carolyn had outlived the prognosis of her passing in time to do all this, but in 2007, her cancer, meta her cancer metastasized, and it became apparent that she would have little time left in this realm. So I began going up to Marshfield, Vermont, to visit Carolyn at home. On March, in March of 19, or 2007, I joined members of the Angel Band who came to Carolyn's house for a potluck supper and to sing. It was an extraordinary evening of healing, uh, with Carolyn lying on the couch and all of us learning new music together. Driving back, I knew that we needed an angel band down here in Franklin County. So I called Kathy immediately, and she responded immediately. She said, how can I help? Uh, let's have a meeting. Why don't I organize a workshop down here? Well, the rest is history, as they say. And um, in September of 2007, she had a workshop in Greenfield. One month later, on October 28th, a group of singers gathered at the First Congregational Church in Greenfield for a group that was about to be called Eventide Singers. The First Congregational Church is our rehearsal home, has been since the beginning, five years ago. We meet on the first, the third, and when there is one, fifth Sunday evening of each month. Now 24 singers strong, we accomplish our mission in two ways. First, we sing in small groups at the bedsides of the critically and terminally ill. These sings take place in people's homes, four local nursing and health care centers, our local hospital, and the Fisher Home Hospice Facility in Amherst, Massachusetts. Secondly, as a full choir, we sing for life-affirming public occasions, such as the annual Memorial Day and Veterans Day services, at the Veterans Administration Hospital, the Hospice of Franklin County, Relay for Life, and other public memorial services. Our um, deepest gratitude is reserved for those who invite us to be present at and to participate in what is probably the most sacred and intimate moment in a family's life. But being there uh, entails a great responsibility because hospicing is not just about singing. All of our members are required to take hospice orientation training. That training has been provided for us by the Hospice of Franklin County for the five years of our existence. Every single person in Eventide is grateful to be part of the growing hospice choir movement in America.